Hello everyone. Today we will talk about situation ethics. Now, as you see in the slide, it is subscripted as love is the way. Well, situation ethics is a kind of uh, ethical theory, if it may so be called, that tries to uh, understand or to put forth the moral domain uh, in, in terms of uh, the situation and the perspective of the uh, agent. Now, what is situation ethics? Uh, let us take a look. Now, uh, frequently you must have come across uh, or you might yourself have come with uh, um, alibi that well, um, every situation is so unique, it is uh, different. How can there be one uh, general moral theory, which talks about uh, uh, right and wrong or about any value judgment? cutting across situations. Uh, so, we come across this uh, through in various domains, when we talk about situations, when we talk about real life decisions being taken that well, uh, that was the situation, this is the knowledge uh, that I had about it and I had to take a decision at the moment and this is what I found fit to be done at the moment. Now, there is a, 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 a a domain of uh, moral theory called situation ethics, which was uh, brought about by uh, a Christian philosopher called uh, Fletcher. Now, Fletcher uh, put forth this as a moral uh, theory and it has been uh, present in various traditions already. Let us look at a slide to understand what more, uh, what, what about uh, situation ethics. Now, as it says, uh, situation ethics was pioneered by Joseph Fletcher. Uh, it says that there are neither uh, rules, nor laws, uh, nor rigid theories that can form the basis of uh, the ethical domain. It is only love and acts emerging from the spirit of love that lay the foundation of ethics. Now, when we talk of the word love, what do we understand by it? Now, that is well understood as in the Christian tradition mentioned as a gap or selfless love or a love that does not have any uh, no desire for consequences. No desire for consequences or reciprocation. It is almost to be understood as that love of the saint towards the suffering without any uh, expectation of a um, personal uh, enrichment or any, any personal gains at all. Now, when I say that, well, there are neither rules nor uh, neither rules or laws, nor uh, rigid neither rules, laws nor rigid theories that can form the basis of the ethical domain. It is only love and acts emerging from the spirit of love that lay the foundation of ethics. Now, uh, let us try to conceive that, well, is this what kind of a theory is it? Now, this is very different from. Uh, the various theories that we have talked about earlier. We find here a mention of the term um, love and love being the center of ethics, how, how significant would that be? Well, let us uh, uh, think about it. Now, when the uh, pro uh, modern day propounder of situation ethics, uh, Fletcher is proposing um, love as the uh, thrust for making decisions. He is referring to that love, which is called in uh, 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 the Christian tradition and which is referred as agape, which is means a, a non-reciprocal uh, compassionate love. Now, when uh, we can find this very familiar with the decisions that people take around us, that well, uh, they say that this was the right thing to do, these were the situations and in which this was the right thing to do. So, they had and go, went ahead and did that, did exactly that. Now, is, uh, is this a little uncomfortable to our moral sense, love as the thrust of moral theory? Well, let us go ahead and see more of it to make sense of this. Now, coming to the next slide, why um, situation ethics? Well, the term was coined in the Christian tradition, but can be applicable to uh, many traditions. This was just over a century back. So, uh, this is uh, coined in the Christian tradition, but 
situation ethics in its ethos or in its uh, as a concept has existed in various traditions and is also uh, uh, present in uh, current day functioning. Now, ethical theories are rigid and often present counter intuitive uh, output. Laws are clearly blind to the situation. Now, perhaps a vital component of ethical domain is neutralized out by the ethical theories. The two important points to be remembered is that the uniqueness of the situation and the perspective of the agent. These are the two uh, features that perhaps may have been uh, underestimated or left out by earlier ethical theories. Now, let us uh, take a look that well, we have been talking about certain ethical theories. Now, let us say the Kantian theory or the utilitarian theory or the hedonistic theory. How is it that we take a moral decision? How do, is it that we take a value decision? Uh, when confronted with a value dilemma, do we think well, this is going to be, uh, 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 I am a Kantian. So, I would like to say that well, if this can be universalizable, then I should do it. Perhaps, many of us do not do that. Perhaps, many of us are not so uh, uh, law bound, not so uh, rigidly uh, adhere to rules and laws or principles and theories. Uh, yet, we take decisions. How do we take decisions? Now, for some uh, perhaps decision making uh, uh, takes place by considering well, well, what would be the most suitable thing to do? What is uh, uh, the right thing to do, which emerges out of love. Now, let us take an example to make this simpler. Let us say the actions of a saint, uh, uh, a saint's compassion for the suffering. Now, that uh, uh, saint's compassion for the suffering is an example of agape love and uh, whatever value decisions he takes around, she or he takes around to get rid of those sufferings are mostly. Uh, powered or mostly uh, clarified by the uh, compassion that the saint has towards the suffering. A clear case in example would be Mother Teresa. Now, uh, I am sure she has had to take a lot of decisions uh, in her life and uh, as we have, uh, uh, as we know, she was a, a compassionate person and well, uh, many people have cited her as an example of situation ethics that where her uh, uh, the, uh, the kind of agape love that situation ethicists talk about is exemplified in saints, where the decision is taken out by what is the mo which is the most loving thing to do or which would bring about the most uh, 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 loving parameters around. So, it is like uh, uh, when we are functioning for something uh, uh, any time to take a moral decision what would bring out most uh, love in this uh, environment. Now, thinking of this, it is not uh, uh, perhaps not so easy to uh, uh, realize that well, how do we decide what brings about the best love in the circumstances. Well, let us uh, uh, sp uh, slowly and steadily threadbare analyze what could actually mean by situation ethics. So, uh, well, first we see that as uh, it is mentioned on the slide that ethical theories are rigid and often present counter intuitive output. Many times ethical theories uh, when uh, stuck to produce counter intuitive output. So, it is like uh, there are a lot of thought experiments, a lot of uh, e examples uh, given where uh, may be making uh, uh, say in the case of an organ donation uh, coming out for uh, a utilitarian theory. Uh, it might be wise, but when push the theory still becomes obscene or counterintuitive. When uh, let us let us take two examples of organ donation in case uh, we have gotten over the organ donation example discussed uh, long back. Now, suppose there is a patient and we would like to uh, uh, we would like to see uh, that there are five more uh, there are six patients in a hospital and. Uh, one patient is uh, terminally ill and is perhaps not uh, uh, is in a coma and but if organs from him are uh, harvested the other five patients can be uh, uh, can get back their normal lives 
So, in certain versions of utilitarian uh, perspective, we could say that well, now this this person uh, patient who is in coma may be uh, uh, allowed to uh, be to be euthanized so that uh, we have organs for the um, other uh, people. Now, stretch it forward. Now, what if this one person is a healthy person? Is the healthy person's life uh, uh, worth uh, uh, very little when it can bring about happiness to five more or say fifty more people? Now, these are some places where we see sticking to one kind of theory uh, produces some counterintuitive results. Now, looking at the slide, we can see that what is clearly wrong with such a situation. Well, first, why? Uh, is that these laws or these theories are clearly blind to the situation. They are indifferent or unaware. Unaware of the situation. Now, uh, more secondly, they lack the perspective of the agent. Uh, now, perhaps a vital component of ethical domain is, is neutralized out by ethical theory. So, the uniqueness of the situation, every situation is unique. Now, every situation has its own particulars, it has its own uh, uh, details, it has its own uh, intricacies. Now, how can one uh, be indifferent to these uh, um, intricacies? Now, situation ethics takes this step to weigh in, to measure, to factor in these uh, intricacies. So, when I say factoring in intricacies or uniqueness of the situations is what I mean by uniqueness of the situation. And secondly, the perspective of the agent, the agent has a perspective. Now, what does uh, uh, an ethical theory try to do? A regular ethical theory that we have talked about tries to neutralize or get rid of the perspective of the agent. In fact, it goes ahead and sees the perspective of the agent as a diluter to uh, uh, value thinking or uh, weighing the scales unfavorably uh, towards injustice or making it unfair because the perspective of the uh, agent. Well, but being indifferent to the perspective of the agent, is that the situation? Well, the situation ethicists think no, that is not the uh, resolution of the problem. We have to factor in the uh, uniqueness of the situation and the perspective of the agent. Now, these two parameters along with the spirit of love lay the situation ethics view of, of the ethical domain. Now, it is not the laws that are applied, but the spirit in which a value decision is made is that matters. When confronted with a value dilemma, the agent assesses the situation, its particularities and a resolution is arrived, which seems the most compassionate or which brings out the most of love. Now, let me give an example, how uh, let me bring forth that how we find situation ethics in the, uh, the genesis of situation ethics. Now, situation ethics is not so uh, uh, hell bent on uh, atomizing the uniqueness of the situation as it is also bringing forth the ethos of moral judgments, which is uh, love or the agape form of love. Now, uh, in the Christian tradition, there are certain commandments that are to be followed. Now, are these commandments to be followed at all costs? Are these commandments to be followed uh, when they are counterintuitive? Say, if there is a commandment like one should not lie. Now, if uh, does one uh, not lie to prevent a uh, murderer searching his victim? Or uh, does one not lie to a uh, uh, criminal searching his uh, victim? Now, these are cases where clearly sticking to laws has its problems. So, this was the time that uh, precipitated uh, the uh, 
propounder of situation ethics as a theory in the modern tradition, uh, Joseph Fletcher to postulate something called situation ethics, where this blind obedience to laws, indifferent and irrespective of uh, the circumstances or the perspective of the agent or the spirit of action, is no more to be followed. Now, these three uh, uh, entities, the perspective of the agent, the details of the situation and uh, the spirit of the action. These three, uh, according to Fletcher or according to, largely according to the situa uh, situation ethics uh, tradition and concept, we find are uh, very particular uh, to moral judgments and have perhaps been given lesser importance in standard moral theories. Now, coming to the next slide, uh, are situation uh, ethicists relativists? Okay, before we talk about uh, this question that whether situation ethicists are relativists, I would like to bring forth this example that since we have talked about uh, the Christian uh, tradition, uh, let me also rec uh, recuperate that acting out of love is not exclusive to any particular religious tradition. In fact, many religious traditions uh, including Hinduism and Islam have propounded that well, decisions are right when they are taken in the right spirit, the spirit of love or the spirit of uh, uh, welfare. Now, having a spirit or, or an ethos of decision making is different from having a algorithm or guidelines of decision making. Uh, the ethos of spirit making finds its application uh, to a moral question via the agent. Now, if there is uh, a spirit of uh, uh, love or justice, how it is applied to a situation depends on the agent. But if there are a few guidelines to be followed, the, uh, uh, it reduces the uh, uh, role that the agent plays and in certain contexts, it in that way makes it more fair. But in certain concepts, uh, in certain context, it also makes the entire procedure blind and immune to the intricacies of the situation that only the agent can perceive. So, uh, we still cannot have a set of guidelines, laws so to say the least or even principles and theories uh, that can uh, blindly uh, given an input of a situation deliver a uh, intuitive uh, value judgment or uh, deliver a value judgment that we would find intuitive. Now, this is the uh, gap that situation ethics tries to fulfill uh, and by giving, by trusting the agent, uh, that the agent would act in the spirit of, uh, uh, spirit of making the uh, moral judgment and not intentionally or willfully ambiguating the agent. The, uh, the Indian example of uh, Vasudeva Kutumbakam, where one uh, understands that well, the entire world is one family and entire f one is uh, or ought to be concerned or love the entire family and therefore, one's decisions taken are towards an entire family. Uh, so, towards the world as an entire family. So, thereof uh, uh, moral judgment can only be determined, uh, can be taken when it is taken from this spirit. So, uh, now coming back to uh, the claim that are situation ethicists uh, relativists. Well, before we read the slide, let me say why do we think or why, why could uh, situation ethicists be relativists. Now, e one could argue that well, a situation ethicist leaves the uh, judgment, the application or the judgment of the uh, situation dependent on the uh, individual. Now, the individual uh, functioning out of an ethos or spirit of love takes a decision. So, perhaps different people could take different uh, decisions in identical situations, because that would be their application of uh, love, that would be their application of the spirit of taking a judgment. So, uh, well, it is, it is quite sensible that well, uh, wh what matters when we, uh, when we uh, say that well, a particular person is heading an organization. Now, if an organization or if a, if a, let us, let us talk of uh, 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 a court of justice. Now, if the court of justice depends on, uh, 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 takes its decisions 
by following the uh, laws laid out in the constitution, it should be immaterial that uh, what judge or who is the judge sitting uh, on the bench. Now, as uh, the judgment taken should be irrespective of the justice sitting of the judge sitting on the bench, but we find that it is probably uh, never so. We find that it is always uh, 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 a judge's decision is overturned by another judge. What one judge finds concrete evidence, another may not find it as concrete as the former. So, we see that the individual is, uh, is perhaps a hindrance, uh, is, is a, uh, a roadblock, a speed breaker for the application of uh, fair universal rules on a situation and not facilitator. Well, this is an uh, uh, perspective or an attitude that would perhaps uh, uh, make us uh, conclude that well, situation ethicists are really relativist, because they are giving this um, human element too much of discretionary power and thereof making well, uh, every judgment justified by the uh, individual uh, who is making the decision, because uh, what is the spirit one functions of and uh, uh, given the situations, the individual takes a decision. So, different individuals can take different decisions in identical situation. So, therefore, there can be no single way of working. Well, the situation ethicist's answer is, as we see on the slide, no, it is not so. It might appear that each agent is entitled to arrive at his or her own decision, thereby there being no absolute decision it is all perspectival. This is the eternal claim of relativists that well, it is all perspectival and therefore, there is no absolute decision. Now, this is incorrect. According to situation ethicists, love is the single guiding principle and if not intentionally ambiguated in application, there would be no variation in decisions in identical situations. As uh, Fletcher himself puts it, love relativizes the absolute, it does not absolutize the relative. Now, let us take a look. If we find that well, the individual, uh, uh, why, wh what are the charges of relativism against situation ethics? Well, the charges are that well, you situation ethicist, I see that you are uh, uh, taking a decision according to whatever spirit you are functioning, the says the spirit of love and you are taking a decision uh, x in a situation y. Now, another person in a situation y, uh, in a situation x will be a taking another decision not y, because his interpretation is different. Now, thereof we find the different decisions being taken and there being no uniform pattern around it. Now, situation ethicists would uh, counter argue that well, if one does not willfully ambiguate or intentionally misinterpret. Now, these are two important terms that uh, uh, we need to take, uh, take cognizance of. Willfully ambiguate or intentionally misinterpret. Then, uh, if one does not willfully ambiguate or intentionally misinterpret the situation, then uh, we, uh, we would functioning from the spa same spirit have or the same it is functioning from the same ethos have identical judgments in identical situations. Would that be would that not be an absolutist claim? The situation ethicists are very clear that we are uh, not talking about uh, uh, relativism at all. We are talking that, well, love is the single most uh, uh, absolute uh, ethos and factor that is absolute in our uh, moral theory. And that love, as is said, relativizes the absolute, but does not uh, uh, absolutize the relative. So, it is the spirit of love, which is tempered or uh, which is uh, uh, adjusted or which is uh, seen through the glass of love, 
or seen through the, the spirit of love is seen through the glasses or the tint of the circumstance to arrive at the judgment. But the vision of love remains the same. So, it is the vision of the love, vision of love uh, uh, which passes through the glass or the tint of the situation and the perspective to arrive at a decision. Note that the vision remains the same, no matter uh, uh, how the glass keeps on changing and the glass keeps on changing or the tint keeps on changing, because situations are different. If situations were the same, then the agent should be able to show the same uh, 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 judgment. Now, if uh, uh, situation ethicists were relativists, then well, the even the ethos, there should be a variation in the ethos of judgments. Now, uh, we see that uh, 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 situation ethicists say that well, as uh, we see in the slide, that love relativizes the absolute, it does not absolutize the relative. So, the Fletcher's claim is that, well, it is love that is relativizing the absolute moral judgments, but it is not making morality relative as such. Now, let us see what are the other questions that come along with situation ethicists. Does situation ethics collapse into utilitarianism? Now, is being driven by love or agape end up in the principle of the greatest good of the greatest number? The most loving action is often understood as that which will produce the greatest good of the greatest number. This may be the case uh, often, but is not structurally necessary. Does situation ethics collapse into utilitarianism? Now, is being driven by love end up in the principle of the greatest good of the greatest number? Uh, the most loving action is often understood as that which will produce the greatest good of the greatest number. This may be the case often, but is not structurally necessary. Now, let us look at the problem. The problem is that whether uh, situation ethics uh, becomes utilitarianism, is it the same thing as utilitarianism? Because, uh, as we have been talking uh, for the past uh, some time, uh, we might have an impression that well, situation ethics is also targeting, uh, is uh, functioning out of the spirit of love, and is also talking about uh, there being uh, uh, bringing about the greatest good of the greatest number, or um, bringing about uh, goodness. Now let's see. Let's say you are a teacher or a or a parent, and you would like to. Uh, you have a ward or a student or a child. Now how would you like to? see uh, the good of this uh, parent, uh, this uh, student. So, a, stu a teacher or a parent can very often show anger and uh, to discipline the student, without actually feeling anger or uh, feeling hatred or angst against the child or the student. But, the purpose uh, of the uh, exhibition of anger or strictness is to discipline the young child, who would uh, not perhaps listen to reason as much as he would uh, or she would listen to fear. And this is out of a love for the child to uh, uh, prosper and for the child to learn the right ways to uh, for him to gain happiness. Now, this kind of a, 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 an act, where uh, the child or the parent is exhibiting anger or exhibiting uh, strictness, uh, turns out to be uh, difficult, turns out to be almost uh, a violation of uh, situation ethics, perhaps no, but does it become utilitarian, because it is actions done for the greatest uh, good of the individual, right. And, or if a teacher is uh, uh, strict in the class, with the view that well, this is a, a class of young children, who would perhaps listen better to uh, a little bit of disciplining, rather than uh, 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 reason. Well let it be so. So, uh, we have possibilities of confusing utilitarianism with uh, uh, situation ethics, and very often we would see that well, situation ethics is uh, talking of the same thing, what uh, uh, utilitarians talk about, but it is not necessarily so, it is not structurally so. There can be cases, where the utilitarian claim is very different from 
what is the claim of the situation ethicist. The ethicist who is driven by love, conditioned by the circumstances and uniqueness of the situation. Uh, now, the utilitarians uh, are only emph uh, emphasizing on what brings about the greatest good of the greatest number, that can be a limitation, that can be uh, 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 indifferent or that can be independent of what is the most loving thing to do or what is the, th uh, uh, the absolute uh, love uh, uh, quotient to happen. Now, so as, as we see the uh, in the slide, the conclusion about utilitarians is that well, we see that uh, this may be the case often, but is not structurally necessary. So, structurally there is no necessity for situation ethics to collapse into utilitarianism. Now, so let us uh, now see what are the advantages or what is the recompense of situation ethics. Well, it presumes the best in humans, everyone functioning out of love. Now, when we talk about presuming the best uh, uh, about human beings, it is about making a claim that well, the situation ethic, uh, ethicist beats the relativist by saying that well, if all people are driven out of this ethos of love or uh, 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 a spirit of agape, will actually make the world a better place. So, it is uh, uh, more forward looking, it is, it is uh, uh, assuming a, a hypothetical or it is uh, hoping for a situation where everybody functions out of uh, love. This may not be the real situation now or currently or at any time, but this assumes that this is a possibility. Now, it shows a midway between rigid rules and theories and what may be called an anarchy of relativism. Now, let us take a look. We have two sides of um, in in a uh, in our value domain. We find at one side rigid, strict rules, theories. On the other side, the anarchy of relativism, where everything goes, there is no objective way of judging what is better from another. Now, up from these two extremes, the situation ethics actually gives a midway, a way in which uh, it is not. Uh, uh, having the anarchy of relativism, yet it is also not having the rigidity of uh, moral theories and uh, principles. Now, uh, in uh, conjunction with this point, and the third point mentioned here, the importance to the perspective of the agent and the details of the situation is given. Uh, the perspective of the agent which has been tried to be neutralized by many moral theories and which has been atomized or and given most importance in uh, uh, perhaps uh, relativism is also again brought into the midway. So, uh, the perspective of the agent and the details of the situation uh, have again been given most importance in relativism and re least importance in uh, the moral theories and principles. Now, in situation ethics as a moral theory, it tries to bring a midway between giving it not as much importance as that the relativist would give and not as little importance as the uh, regular ethical theorist would pay. Now, the final recompense that we find is moral thinking is not totally algorithmic, not totally algorithmic. The human element is replaceable, irreplaceable. Now, that is a uh, crucial aspect that we need to see, that uh, moral thinking is not totally algorithmic. So, by the an uh, advantage feature, a crucial feature of moral thinking is that, well of moral thinking in the situation ethicist perspective, is that it cannot be totally algorithmatized, it cannot be decrypted into principles. So, that given a situation, you can feed the input and get the output the human element that moderates, moderates between uh, the ethos and the decision, ethos to decision. This segment is given importance, this is the human element and that is irreplaceable. And what does the human element do? The human element is talks of 
its capacity to uh, to know or to specify or to understand to understand the details of the situation understand situation intricacies and to pay importance to perspective perspective of the agent now what is the flip side or what is the disadvantage of uh, relativism well the spirit of love is difficult to codify and what cannot be codified faces the problems of ambiguity acting out of love can be the justification of a teacher punishing the student for the student's own good in long term now acting out of uh, now this um, uh, lays a crucial difficulty that uh, situation ethicists face that it is difficult to codify and what cannot be codified no codification and what cannot be codification can always lead to ambiguity intentional or unintentional this is a leap that the uh, situation ethicists take that well uh, ideally there will be no ambiguity if the ethos is clear well that is not uh, uh, a very w what we find in practice acting out of love can be the justification of a teacher and giving punishments the same teacher paying punishments giving punishments to students is could be clearly a violation of the students rights now acting out of love gives cancels this thing called rights there are no more things called rights because it is acting out of love and decision making authority is in the hands of the agent now many people have seen situation ethics uh, ethics as an uh, anti theory because it stretches into particularism and there can be no generic claims made if this uh, uh, middle level that we talked about which was situations and perspective right from the ethos situation perspective and then came the decision now if this is the human element well and if this human element is so important then this simply means that no generic claims can be made because each of these elements in fact uh, each of these elements are uh, can always be different so in fact this in a way very fundamentally questions our ability to even theorize in the uh, uh, human uh, uh, value domain because these situations become crucial now let's sum up what is the upshot of this moral theory now uh, this moral theory talks uh, is well one a claim ahead of its times perhaps for a time when wicked intent and intentional misinterpretation are much lesser now the situation ethicist is of the claim that well uh, the uh, whatever charges of relativism that fall uh, that come against situation ethics are because of the ambiguity of uh, of charges of ambiguity are because of willful misinterpretation or ambiguation of the ethos but that may not really be the case always that may be the case most of the times but very often an ethos finding uh, an uh, application via uh, uh, the domain of uh, situation uh, or the details of the situation is uh, quite uh, wavy one can see that well uh, even if one is clear in the ethos it is not that all people with the same ethos or uh, crystal clear ethos can actually lead to a uh, better uh, uh, can lead to the identical uh, judgments in identical uh, circumstances there is also something uh, there is some intrinsical trouble in having ethos uh, finding its application via the uh, human agent 
Now, well, one good thing that situation ethics does, it brings to light the earlier neglect of the uniqueness of particulars and the perspective of the agent. They are not dismissible hindrances, but essential components of the value domain. Now, the situation ethicist has done a great service by bringing, uh, uh, getting back importance to these two factors. Now, these two factors uh, became the ultimate, uh, um, got uh, the ultimate importance with uh, um, relativism, but so much so that theories were neglected and it, uh, uh, a lot of counter intuitive possibilities came up. Now, on the situation ethics, uh, ethics brings back the importance of the uniqueness of particulars that, well particulars are a fact of uh, uh, the human predicament or human life and the perspective of the agent does matter. So, these are not dismissible hindrances, but essential components of the value domain. The now, uh, at number 3 would be the uh, eternal conflict or supposed conflict between justice and love. Well, um, the situation ethicists find that, uh, find a compatibility between justice and love. They find uh, justice is love in action. Now, uh, the uh, situation ethicists also say that, well, ends are important and consequences do justify and motivate the equation. Now, we pay importance that ends are important. It is not just means that whatever we do, we do out of love uh, and that love finds its uh, 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 direction from the possible end. So, it is a form of consequentialism that when the consequences matter and the consequences, consequences shape the system. So, well to sum it up, well we uh, situation ethics is uh, 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 a refreshing change from the uh, various uh, ethical theories that tend to become increasingly abstract and thereby uh, preventing the human uh, uh, element in moral decision making, because after all it is about, be, uh, the value domain is about being human. It is not about having an algorithm to make, uh, um, take moral decisions. It is about being human and it is a predicament that uh, humans face. So, uh, situation ethics axiomatizes the human element and brings forth uh, uh, the uniqueness and the details uh, or the intricacies of a circumstance with the perspective of the agent, uh, followed by an ethos into action. So, it is a clear reminder, it was a refreshing change from uh, uh, the erstwhile uh, Christian moral tradition, where the commandments were supposed to be inflexible and absolute and often uh, when followed to the letter, came up with counter intuitive uh, uh, results. Uh, but now, when uh, Fletcher puts forth this in the Christian tradition, it wants to moderate the commandments into following it in spirit rather than in letter, because following it in letter is perhaps too axiomatic. But in the same hand, we see that, well, this is perhaps a situation way ahead of its time, when everybody functions with, um, uh, functions out of love. We need a system, a system of rights, a system of laws, where uh, we have to factor in the possibility that the human element can some uh, times willfully and sometimes unintentionally uh, ambiguate the uh, application of the ethos. So, this situation uh, by itself, left by itself to in the current scenario may not be the ideal situation for it to work. Whereas, uh, 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 on the other hand, uh, uh, a society or a family or a group or a collective, where we see uh, situation ethics uh, as the uh, uh, dominant uh, moral way of working speaks very high of its moral evolution, where uh, uh, the ethos is uh, so well imbibed that uh, it is absolutistic uh, in all its applications. So, with this we come to end of, of the brief discussion on situation ethics. Mm -hmm.